the government news brief for Thursday, September 29, 2016. In the news, gold production to exceed target this year, NDIA drainage and irrigation works to benefit more than 800 West Bank Demerara residents and farmers, and public health services in Region 6 to improve with new health center, among other projects. Stay tuned for the details. Thank you for staying with us. I am Renetta LaFleur. Now for the details. Gold production is set to surpass its target for this year. Details in this Tiffany Rodius report. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman says gold production continues to surpass projections. Uh, as of this month, we are 94% ahead of where we were last year. So we've, in a sense, doubled our gold production. At this rate, gold declaration is expected to surpass the projected 600,000 ounces for 2016. Trotman says there have been positive developments in reducing instances of gold smuggling as well. In addition, the sector has been making strides in eliminating the use of mercury in gold mining. There is some resistance, but at the same time, I would say the majority of miners are willing to comply. The elimination of mercury from mining is part of modernizing the technologies used in the extractive sector. The government has been working on an action plan aimed at minimizing and eventually eliminating the use of mercury in mining. As for other minerals, Trotman says bauxite continues to improve its production when compared to last year. However, the mining of stones has been problematic and the minister says he will make a statement on this next week. For the Government News Brief, I'm Tiffany Rogers. Public health services in Region 6 should improve with the construction of a new health center on the East Bank Burbese and other projects. More from Sonika Thorne. Residents at Myra on the East Bank of Burbese, Region 6, will soon be able to access services at a health center in their community. Director of Health Services, Region 6, Javon Stevens, says the center should be ready by the end of this year. We are constructing at the moment a health center on the East Bank of Barbies at Mara. Uh, we have upgraded and added new facilities for doctors and nurses that is in living, living quarters. And we, our, um, cap, our current work is ongoing. Residents of Mara and nearby communities have often complained about the absence of a functional health center in their area. This forced them to seek health care at the New Amsterdam Hospital some distance away. For a number of years, the Mara Skip Mode Health Center was left abandoned. The villagers only benefited from visiting health teams organized by the Ministry of Public Health. In addition to the health center, Stevens said a number of other capital projects are progressing smoothly. At the moment, we are about 80, just about 84% of our implementation plan as regards to the 2016 budget. Some of the capital projects that were included is the construction of a 14-bed HDU which is presently under construction. There is also a phase three of the outpatient department, OPD3. Um, this would include laboratory services and so on, also on-call facility for doctors. Though communities on the East Bank of Barbies are sparsely populated, effective and efficient health care is needed. This will contribute to the overall level of health within the region. For the Government News Brief, Sneaker Thorn reporting. More than 800 residents and farmers on the west bank of Demerara are set to benefit from drainage and irrigation works undertaken by the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, NDIA. Details in this story. Senior engineer at the NDIA, Dave Hicks, says the authority is working with the regional and neighborhood democratic councils to improve drainage at canals number one and two. The internal canals polo, it will increase the capacity the drainage capacity of the system by installing um, a 200 cusack uh, fixed pump and then hand it over to the, the region to kind of operate and control. Now what we found was that for years farmers have been complaining about flooding in the canals, the canals polar area, the canal one area and the canal two. So we have um, installed and rehabilitated some pumps. We installed an 80 cusack mobile pump which is generally fixed, and we have also uh, constructed and installed a $120 million pump station that's fixed there. Hicks says Canal Number no. 1 is also being dredged to improve its drainage capacity. 
This will offer greater protection to more than 7,000 acres of land under cultivation with cash and permanent crops. To supplement this, we have awarded a contract for $6 million to excavate the canal with a drag line. And we further will continue our maintenance program, which clean the weeds on a monthly basis from the canal at about $1.5 million per month. Hicks says works which started about four weeks ago on the canal should be completed shortly. Monthly maintenance will resume immediately after. For the Government News Brief, I'm Tiffany Rogers. Secondary school students could soon be using mobile electronic devices including iPods and tablets in the classroom to access learning materials. Delicia Haynes tells us more. 82 secondary schools in Regions 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are now connected to the government EGOV infrastructure and are able to access Wi-Fi and Internet services. Head of the MIS unit at the Ministry of Education, Yoganand Indar Singh, says computers in the secondary schools, computer laboratories have access to the network and the Internet. What the Ministry of Education has so far done is to start connecting those labs into um, that Internet access point through EGOV. Also, we're, we're connecting in the administrative areas. So in the first phase, students utilizing the IT lab will be able to access internet through the eGov network, as well as the persons within the administrative areas. Since there will also be a wireless router within these labs, this will also mean that children using tablets, iPods, and similar electronic mobile devices would also have access to the network. Indar Singh says that the service will be made available to whatever instructional technology will be used within the school as a part of the curriculum and not only for students preparing their SBAs. So for example, under um, the World Bank funded um, secondary improvement project, there is a mathematics pilot that is targeting a number of schools in which students at grade seven level would be provided with tablets. And as such, those students will be utilizing internet access within the school to be able to um, learn mathematics using um, the technology. Indar Singh says the children would not have inhibited access to the internet. He explains that systems are in place to filter the content to ensure that the children only use the service for educational and instructional purposes. From the eGov side, um, they will apply filtering so that appropriate content um, will be accessed you know, by the schools. And then further within the schools, um, depending on you know, what restrictions will be required, those could also be set. In keeping with the mandate given by President David Granger to have all public institutions, including schools, equipped with Internet services to facilitate the transition from traditional learning techniques to a modern information and communication technology ICT approach, all the secondary schools across the country are expected to have access to the Internet and Wi-Fi service before the end of the year, with primary schools coming on stream in 2017. For the Government News Brief, I am Delicia Haynes. Guyana is known to produce world rang boxers. Gwendolyn O'Neill, Wayne Braffitt, Andrew Sixhead Lewis, Vivian Harris are names that come to mind. Now, the Department of Sports is helping to shape the next world title holder. Isaiah Braffitt has the details. This is part of the National Sports Commission plan to push for the development of sports in Guyana, especially among youths. Handing over the gear was Director of Sports Christopher Jones. Jones says that over the past few months, an assessment was carried out on the level of boxing and the level of boxing gyms. Recognizing that Guyana's only Olympic medal came from boxing and the potential is still there for Guyana to medal in boxing. So every and every other opportunity that presents itself in which we could aid those boxers in those communities with the necessary resources that will enable them to, to, to represent Guyana, uh, we intend to do so. More guards, speed bags, boxing boots, a punching bag, Boxing gloves, groin protectors, and head guards were some of the gear presented to the gym. Head coach of the boxing gym, Seaboard Blake, expressed his gratitude to the director on keeping a promise he made for providing gear to the gym. He came and see the condition of the gym and the needs of the boxers in terms of equipment and other accessories, and he, he made a commitment that he's going to supply us with some gears and 
Today is the, the day that it has bear fruit. Young and upcoming 17-year-old boxer Kevin Alicock says that the gear will be put to good use. We just want to say thanks on the behalf of FYF Boxing Gym. Thank, thanks in, uh, asking thanks to uh, Mr. Mr. Jones. And we appreciate everything and we're going to use it, use the stuff that you give me and bring out the best that we can. This is part of the government's effort towards pushing and raising the level of sports in Guyana. As early as 2017, athletes in Guyana will be presented with a national sports policy that will be used to guide the direction of sports. Isaiah Bradford, the Government News Brief. We have come to the end of today's edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. Gina has an active Facebook page and we encourage you to visit and like us so you can be informed as the news unfolds. Do join us again tomorrow for another edition of the Government News Brief. Until then, I am Renette LaFleur. Thank you for watching.